Welcome to episode 57 of Published. For our final episode of the year, we have two guests, Corinne Foster, Greenleaf's Director of Branding and Marketing, and Kesley Smith, Greenleaf's Director of Business Development and Corporate Communications. Our people have long titles. Today we'll talk about top book marketing and author branding tips and trends for the coming year. Welcome to Published, a podcast by Greenleaf Book Group, where we'll discuss the ins and outs of the publishing industry, from writing a book and finding the right publisher, to gearing up for a book launch. And now, here's your host, Greenleaf Book Group CEO, Tanya Hall. Welcome back to Published. In this episode, we're discussing the top book marketing and promotion techniques going into 2022. Many authors think that the hard work ends once their book hits the shelves, but that's actually when the marketing grind really picks up and can make a huge impact on your book's success. After all of your hard work, writing, editing, and designing your book, you don't want it to fall flat due to a half-baked marketing plan or the lack of an author brand. In this episode, Corinne gives an inside look into how she helps authors devise effective marketing strategies every day and shares advice on what you can do to get started. Another important part of the author marketing and branding process is having a well-crafted social media presence. With the rise of the internet and social networking as a way to connect, having a strong presence on social platforms is becoming an increasingly important element of author promotion. Kesley brings her expertise in branding and social media to our interview today and shares tips and tools authors can use to build up their platform in the coming year. If you're looking for book marketing advice and predictions as we head into 2022, you've come to the right place. Let's get into the interview. Welcome back, Kesley and Corinne. It's great to see you both. For clarity, we have a couple different layers of marketing going on at Greenleaf. One is author-focused, one is company-focused. So Corinne is more author-focused, Kesley is company-focused. I would say they both can toggle back and forth very well. (laughs) But as a starter, why don't you each tell our listeners about what you do here at Greenleaf? And Corinne, if you want to go first, and then Kesley, you can follow. Sure. So I'm Corinne. I'm the director of branding and marketing here at Greenleaf. I've been here for about 10 years and working with authors in total for about 12 years. My teams handle everything from brand and social media strategy to website builds and content development, also book launch marketing and media outreach as well. And I also consult with authors on tying their book to their brand and their business, and also social media strategies and how we can achieve Amazon bestseller status. Awesome, and you do it all very well. Kesley? Awesome, so my name is Kesley Smith. I'm the Director of BizDev and Corporate Communications here at Greenleaf, and like Tanya said, I manage more of the company marketing aspects of the business. So in my role, I wear many hats, many of which include coming up with creative initiatives to expand Greenleaf's presence, both online and offline. I manage the company marketing, the biz dev, corporate communications, strategic partnerships, and um, all aspects for the parent Greenleaf company. And then I manage all of those aspects for the imprints and the growth initiatives as well. I'm also head of the submissions team. So I meet with both debut and seasoned authors to help them identify the best publishing options for their book and guide them through the business model and the submission process. All right, a lot on your plate, we all know. (laughs) (laughs) So the last time we did an episode on book marketing tips was back in 2019, believe it or not. And obviously none of us had any idea what sort of curveball 2020 had in store. So in the last few years now, really, what have each of you done to pivot away from any complications introduced by COVID and how have you uh, revised your marketing strategies? Corinne, we'll start with you again. So our marketing campaigns have been digitally focused for some time now with an emphasis on online discoverability and searchability and targeted advertising to reach consumers as close to the point of purchase as possible. Uh, But there has been an increase in emphasis on digital review copies for reviewers and endorsers. The trades were very quick to change to PDFs and digital copies for review consideration, as well as the awards as we're finishing up those submissions right now. There's been some process changes, but generally everything's been positive and it's decreased efficiency and the speed that we can get reviewer feedback. I would say one area that we saw a significant change was engagement with libraries and bookstores. Physical locations, as everybody knows, were closed for quite a long period of time, but both were really great at pivoting to online orders and virtual events. 
curbside pickup and libraries especially drove readers to ebooks and audiobooks. So there's been an increased focus on reaching out to those partners to make sure that our books are available and our authors are available for events because those libraries and bookstores are not only important to the industry, but they're really important to our communities. And we want to see our authors engaged with them and really taking advantage of the readers that are coming through their doors. Yeah, and a lot of people have also commented on how that switch to digital has had this nice impact on sustainability, basically, in our industry. You're not Absolutely. printing and shipping all of these hard copies around unnecessarily. And Kesley, how about you? Yeah, so from the brand side, what we all saw during the pandemic, the personal connection that we all craved was severely lacking. So we wanted to form our marketing strategies around reintroducing that authenticity and finding new and creative ways to interact with our audience and connect with our community. So we catered campaigns towards starting conversations, sharing resources, and listening to what our audiences had to say. So we started Twitter chats, did polls, did live streams, things like that. And then we also saw during the pandemic, it really forced us all to slow down. And many of us are working so fast and doing so many things at once that it really forced us to really slow down and take in what we were given as a positive. So we wanted to cater our content to position, seeing the advantages the pandemic has given us, given us more time at home, more time to work on those projects, finding you know, new and creative ideas to try, new recipes, finally starting on that book. So we really ramped up our inspirational content that showcased the positives of what the extra time of the pandemic was giving us because on the news, all you saw was negative, 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 negative. And that was so over, overshown in feeds as well that we, we really wanted to position it as positive. So we actually catered a campaign towards the gift of time and really talked about what this gift of time can give you and how you can take advantage of it. So we launched this campaign through our content outlets, so social media, newsletters, video. Um, we also focused a lot on sharing helpful content and creative ways to interact and connect with our virtual audiences, like I said previously. A really successful campaign that we launched on social was our remote writing workshop, where every Friday, uh, myself and our executive editor, Aaron Brown, filmed a Q&A style video that covered a variety of topics in the publishing industry, um, and we posted them to all of our social media channels. And each week, we fo focused on a different topic, and we gave the opportunity for for our audience to tell us, you know, what they wanted to see next, what should we talk about next? And that campaign was a huge hit. And for the authors who launched during the pandemic, I wanted to come up with, with a few things on social because like Corinne said, you know, the bookstores and the libraries, those retail outlets were closed. So I wanted to work out a few ways where we could support them virtually. So we set up doing um, live Q and A's. We did Zoom Q and A's where people could, could pop into the live chats and ask the author questions about their publishing experience or for the authors who you know, have really busy schedules and couldn't do the live streams, we pre-recorded them on Zoom. And then we also did uh, virtual readings as well and posted them all to our social media channels, which the authors really enjoyed uh, during, the, during the pandemic when everything was closed. Yeah, definitely. So I hear from both of you, there was a digital expansion, which brings <laughs> certainly some opportunities, but also can bring some challenges. So can each of you speak to what you've learned or seen in terms of the challenges that come along with some of these shifts? Yeah, of course. So being with Greenleaf for 10 years, I can hardly remember a time when we didn't do digital advertising. And having started here at 2010 that was when the ipad was released and everyone was getting really comfortable with social networks and sharing and authors and brands were becoming more digitally savvy so the focus on digital has really allowed authors to take their marketing into their own hands and target campaigns so that they're reaching the right kind of readers and i truly feel like books that may not have found their audience prior to digital media and digital marketing um, really now have a direct way to engage and find those readers and find success. But I think with that comes a really crowded digital marketplace where now followers and subscribers are getting fatigued. It can also be um, more costly to reach audiences, although it's still very cost efficient 
Um, but there's more competition in that space. So now more than ever, quality is more important than quantity, making sure that you're offering your followers and subscribers value so that they continue to engage and become the core people who are going to buy your books, buy your products and tell their, their friends. Um, so I think the big challenge has been creating editorial calendars and coming up with that value added content that is different from being what from what is out there currently. And that's just more time consuming than anything because our authors have such a deep well of knowledge in each of their fields. Um, it's a different mindset to go into the content that you have and be able to make it digestible and um, really build out a media plan and a marketing plan around that content. Mm -hmm. And Kesley? Yeah, so digital marketing and digital media marketing makes reaching your target consumers very simplified, like Corinne said. But with the new advances, as we've seen, leveraging the digital landscape has become thoroughly automized. So more now than ever, the challenge has been coming across as authentic. So in a lot of terms, when everything becomes automized, there's a risk of becoming inauthentic on social media and neglecting the rest of your content. So overpowering your feed with sales or promotions or just strictly promotional items. The key to leveraging digital media marketing and digital marketing successfully and building a successful strategy is to focus on building a community and a strong foundation and people who enjoy and respect your content. So consumers are people, your readers are people. And so when you are connecting with your audience, you have to remember you want to interact with them. You want to listen to what they're saying. Be relatable, be authentic. Rome also wasn't built in a day and building an organic community takes time and effort, but it does pay off in the long run. Okay, so there are many layers to building a book promotion strategy. And I think for lots of authors, it's overwhelming and they don't know where to start. So Corinne, again, starting with you, what would your advice be there? Yeah, so this is a really great discussion question. I think I can go in a lot of different directions. And when I was thinking about it, it really boils down to three basics that I like to make sure all of my authors have covered when they're preparing for the book launch. And that is a plan to reach the industry, whether that's trade reviews, advertising to the wholesalers, bookstore outreach, uh, a plan to reach readers. So book seatings, giveaways, targeted advertising, like on Amazon, where again, they're reaching those buyers and readers as close to the point of purchase as possible. And three, their existing network, utilizing their social media, their newsletter list, and personal outreach to people that they have a relationship that will help support the launch of the book. And I think we're going to get into that last bit, um, a bit, some more questions that you asked. All right. And Kesley. Yeah, all great points by Corinne, as usual. I would also advise to take advantage of strong inbound marketing prior to the book launch. So for those unaware, inbound marketing is all about meeting consumers where they are instead of marketing efforts that push messages out to consumers. This method focus on, focuses on attracting readers and consumers to you and it's highly effective. So inbound marketing leverages content such as blogs, videos, podcasts, webinars, eBooks, et cetera, website, SEO, social media, marketing automation, and much more to nurture consumers and readers in this case at every stage of the buyer journey. So implementing a strong inbound strategy prior to promotion will effectively nurture your marketing ecosystem through attracting readers from all angles. Great advice. And Kesley, you are knee deep in the social media for <laughs> Greenleaf and our various imprints. And I know personally that you just love digital marketing. So can you give us uh, any tips on trends that you're seeing for 2022 on that front? Ooh, huge trends coming up. As we've seen this year, video content is the undisputed king of social media right now. And it currently dominates the space and that will only continue in 2022. First being short form video. So short form took off in early 2020 and shows no sign of slowing down. So for those who are like, what short form video content? That's right, TikTok style videos are all the hype in the marketing world and for good reason. So if you thought TikTok was just for dancing or for teenagers, think again, TikTok has about 
689 billion active users and the power of marketing this community has untapped is magnetic. And because of TikTok's massive success with short form video content, Instagram launched Reels and YouTube launched Shorts, all to compete for users' attention. Global brands, small businesses, individual creators, thought leaders have been using short form video content to effectively participate in relevant trends, promote products or services, or spread educational content, but make it relatable or make it humorous through the audios given on TikTok or on Reels to reach their target audiences. And the next thing I'm seeing, there's a huge, huge jump in, is going to be live stream video content. So live streams have been around for a minute, but they were really popularized during the pandemic. Live streams are incredible for encouraging connection between brand and consumer. So they allow users to interact directly with the host by, by joining the live stream and then asking the host questions, and then the host addressing and answering those questions within the live stream, starting conversations, things like that. This is really, really effective to connect with your community by humanizing your brand and addressing consumer needs all at one time. And we have seen a surge in live streams on all platforms, and that will only continue to grow in 2022. Very exciting. Corinne, anything to add to that? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's covered it. <laughs> All right, so when it comes to building a successful book marketing strategy, um, obviously you all have seen <laughs> many of these come and go. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see authors make? Yeah, so I mentioned that utilizing your network is one of my three biggest recommendations when building out a campaign. And that is where my authors tend not to see the value. They don't know and they don't realize that the people that are following them really have a lot of influence. So the reality is that first time authors really have to lean on their network to help create the initial word of mouth and sales for the book and then it will domino from there. But giving those people access to content, excerpts of the book and engaging them in ways that feel exclusive through newsletters and downloads can really activate them into your street team. I just had an author the other day kind of casually mention after months of consulting with them that they had a newsletter list of 100,000 people oh, wow. that don't know that they're publishing a book in three months. So building out a plan to engage with those people regularly and get them excited about the books that they take action and spread the word. I mean, that can be the, the match that lights the entire fire for a book success. Mm -hmm. And Kesley, anything to add? Yeah, I'm going to piggyback on that a little. Corinne's the expert in this, but from what I have seen, not having a strong content strategy, and she touched on this a little bit, newsletter, social media, that information spreads so easily and so quickly. And having a really strong content calendar prior to the book launch and content strategy is really going to help parlay your message and really push it out to the people who are in your existing network and to also reintroduce your platform and your brand and your book to new consumers. And so having a really strong content strategy prior to the book launch and starting that even months before in building up your platform and growing your audience and starting from, like I said earlier, building that strong foundation. And a lot of that is going to come from a strong content strategy. So definitely having that geared up. Also, I did want to speak on a little bit promoting your book is very important. You know, all authors should be doing it. However, there's a fine line between making it your whole marketing strategy and making it harmonious with the rest of your content. Because like I was saying earlier, authenticity and, you know, connection with your audience is really what is building a strong content or social media strategy and a strong platform nowadays. If you overflow your social or your newsletters with your products or promotions or things that you're selling, people are going to lose interest and they're going to become just overall disinterested in your brand you could lose followers and things like that. So make sure that you are promoting your book and you, because you are the person that's going to promote your book the best. So make sure you're doing so in conjunction with the rest of your content strategy and making them um, balanced instead of overpowering each one. 
Yeah, you're right. That is a common mistake. And we've joked that the 80-20 rule for uh, marketing content versus salesy content is really more like 90-10, if not 95-5. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do either of you or both of you have any tools or apps that you can clue in for our listeners in terms of social media marketing or book promotion? And Corinne, we'll start with you. Yeah. So one, and this piggybacks off something that Kesley previously mentioned about live streaming is Clubhouse. Um, I know the popularity and the projections for that has ebbed and flowed um, over the past couple months, but I do think there's a really big opportunity there for a lot of authors who want to facilitate discussion groups and that engagement. There's some great groups on Clubhouse that meet informally a couple times a week with a moderator and an expert, and they just facilitate uh, conversations and it's a really casual environment, but those groups are growing really rapidly. And I think the barrier to entry is really low for authors and the stress level, you know, it's supposed to be something fun to talk to real people um, and not only share what they know, but also engage and maybe learn something themselves. And then on um, more of the, the specialized marketing side of it, my team loves an app called Publishers Rocket. It really helps us to select Amazon categories and keywords for the metadata that will help best position the book on Amazon so that it reaches the right kinds of readers and gets the algorithm working into the book's favor. We really utilize that tool when we're doing Amazon bestseller strategies with authors to determine what category should the book be in, uh, a general estimate of what kind of sales we're going to need to break the top 10 and even get in the number spot, one spot in those categories. So that's super useful. Um, and then an oldie but a goodie that I think people forget about is Google Trends. We use that as well for what keywords should be used in marketing copy and what keywords should be used in blog posts. And then behind the scenes, we use it in book titling all the time. It's a really great tool if you're comparing two or more words, which one you should use for headline copy or a book title, being able to gauge how often those keywords are searched can really tell you, is there an opportunity to own this keyword if we start using it now and really optimize its usage? Or is this keyword, um, has it peaked and people are now moving on to others? So those kinds of tools to see trends and numbers and searches really gives us a good idea of where consumers' um, heads are and how they're searching and have been super beneficial. Love it. Kesley? So I will talk about inbound and content marketing until I'm blue in the face. And to continue that trend, a big part of that content ecosystem is an effective social media strategy. Social media marketing and planning takes time. And to be successful on social media, consistency is key. And the best partner in that is a strong scheduling software. So I've used just about every social media scheduler available. I think right now I've used just about everyone and Sprout Social is by far my favorite. We used it at Greenly. My whole team uses it. We love it. It has so many really great tools like an optimizing post tool where you just directly go in, upload the post and it tells you what time for what day and what platform will be the best time to post it. Really great. It has an internal Canva tool where you can design content right there in the system. It's amazing. It does such a great job. And to keep on trend with inbound marketing, HubSpot is really an amazing platform for managing all inbound strategies. And so that accounts for content, website, social, lead gen. It's a really great platform to keep all of your inbound marketing strategies in one centralized location. And HubSpot is the kind of inbound strategy platform and they do things so well. They've created inbound. They have really, really hyped up inbound and what it can do for marketers and what it can do for businesses. And their platform is just a true testament of their craft. It's really an amazing platform and helps keep everything organized. Great. Well, we've covered a ton of ground so far. So finally, can you each tell us what you see as being the biggest or hottest marketing trend going into 2022? So I have a 
few of them okay, <laughs> and they're fine. very specific. They're very specific to authors and publishing. So um, I think the growing demand for eBooks and audiobooks specifically, it's the biggest segment, uh, the fastest growing segment of our business right now. And not only did the early months of the pandemic force readers to go digital because of closures, um, the popularity of those digital formats continues to grow, especially because of podcasts they really got listeners and readers used to longer form content and the appetite for audio is there and it's not slowing down anytime soon. Um, just like eBooks are now standard for all books that are published, I think audiobooks are now going to be the standard in that space as well. And the marketing opportunities for that are lagging like they did when eBooks were first released, but we're starting to see more opportunities to reach audiobook listeners through um, BookBub's partner site, Chirp, and through promotions directly with Apple and with Audible. So it's gonna be a, a continued surge on that front as well. Um, I think email engagement is gonna be more vital as ever as uh, people continue to get fatigued by the amount of content that's being thrown at them all the time. And that it is difficult to build a list but once people are on your list, it truly shows that they're invested in your brand and your message. So that goes along with micro-influencers being very valuable. Um, I would much rather have my authors have, you know, a following of say 10,000 of highly engaged followers across networks than have 100,000 people that just aren't responding or aren't replying to any of the content that they're putting out there as well. Um, and I also think there's big opportunity with fast marketing. Um, again, another area that publishers saw a tremendous amount of growth during the pandemic. Um, and for a lot of publishers, their backlist is the, is the backbone of their business and their revenue generation. And it can be for authors as well. So there are more opportunities than ever to revitalize marketing for backlist titles based on current events. And you can easily monitor those through things like Google Trends, through things like Publishers Rocket, um, and you can easily run ebook promotions and targeted advertising to take advantage of those opportunities as well. Yeah, great advice. Kesley? I'll speak more from the brand marketing side like I have done. Influencer marketing will still be a key marketing strategy and revenue driver in 2022. HubSpot states that in 2022, 61% of marketers surveyed in a focus group plan to leverage influencer marketing into their strategies and their budgets. It was actually me measured as the third highest trend that they plan to prioritize behind short form video content and inbound marketing, which I previously spoke about. Next is not so much going to be a trend, but more so a movement. And we did see a lot of this in 2020, but social irresponsibility will not be tolerated. So social responsibility has exceeded the realm of being a trend and moved into more so a category of a movement. Inclusive marketing and social responsibility are a must for everyone with a platform. Social media allows everybody to have a voice and for good reason. And I've seen so many brands and creators fall into a crisis because of poor social listening skills or being tone deaf to situations and not adjusting their marketing strategies to accommodate. So now more so than ever, consumers want and expect those with a platform to use it and speak to important issues or at least even address them. Awesome. Well, thank you both for all of the generous advice for our listeners and Cheers to 2022. <laughs> Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Had a great time. That's it for our episode today with Kesley and Corinne. We hope you picked up some fresh marketing tips for 2022. For notes and resources from today's show, go to greenleafbookgroup.com slash episode 57. You can also find advice for writing, publishing, and promoting your work in my book, Ideas, Influence, and Income, which you can learn more about at ideasinfluenceandincome.com. If you've enjoyed our show, please rate and review us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It means a lot to have your feedback and helps us to make sure we're answering your publishing questions. A big thank you to Eleanor Fishborn, who produces the published podcast. We'll be back next month with another new episode. Thanks for listening to Published. To learn more, please visit greenleafbookgroup.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.